Good afternoon, my name is Professor Nicole Coltman and I am the um, Program Manager for the Health Information Technology Program here at Seminole State College of Florida. And so I'm gonna talk a little bit about a career in health information management, better known as HIM. So first we need to define what is health information. So it's all information that could be gathered when being seen in a doctor's office or other healthcare facility. So it's related to a person's medical history, including symptoms, diagnosis, procedures, and outcomes. Health information records include patient histories, lab results, x-rays, clinical information, and notes. A patient's health information can be viewed individually to see how a patient has changed, and it can also be viewed as part of a larger data set to understand how a population's health has changed and how medical interventions can change health outcomes. So now that we know what is health information, what is health information management then? So health information management is the practice of acquiring, analyzing, and protecting digital and, tradi and traditional medical information vital to providing quality patient care. It's a combination of business science and information technology. Now, health information professionals are experts in caring for patients by caring for their medical data. Um, so I always say we're, that, we're the caregivers of the patients um, on the non-clinical side. So it's nothing worse than, you know, coming out of the hospital, having been hospitalized for several days, and then a week later, you get a bill in the mail, this astronomical bill in the mail that might as well send you right back to the hospital because you had a heart attack looking at how much you owe the hospital, right? So we ensure a patient's health information and records are complete, accurate, and protected, which helps to ensure that your bill is accurate and correct. We implement and optimize computer information systems. We code diagnosis and procedures in all care settings. We, we maintain patient confidentiality. We collect and store information, and then we use and transmit the information. So there are endless opportunities for employment in HIM. So um, you can be a director or a manager of HIM, an electronic health record trainer, a healthcare data analyst, a clinical coding analyst or a clinical coding professional, as well as a billing professional. You can also be a cancer registrar, which works with um, collecting data related to patient, um, to re related to cancer patients. You can be a data analyst. You can be a credentialing specialist who work to um, have, make sure that the physicians that work for the hospitals or who are able to treat patients at the hospitals have their necessary credentials, essentially. You can be a personal health record um, manager or advocator, an, e an electronic health record implementation analyst, a privacy and security manager and officer, and you can also work at insurance companies. We have graduates working for a progressive insurance company as coders, and, as well as Cigna, and we have the Hartford Apprenticeship Program in which we have students and graduates working as disability claims analysts. So an HIM career is right for you if you see yourself in a career that offers diverse opportunities. You wanna work in healthcare, but not directly with patients. You have an aptitude for science, but also like management, law, and computers. And you enjoy working with professionals such as your physicians, administrators, executives. And you want a career where you can choose to work on your own with others or some of both. So how did I become interested in a career in HIM? So I attended Florida a and University and I attended um, majoring in pharmacy. Well, my first semester in pharmacy, I did well. I did all the chemistry. I placed well the summer before on my chemistry exam. So I was able to take the, the required chemistry courses. But the problem is 
I didn't like it. I didn't like what I was studying. I didn't want nothing to do with it. So I took a trip over to the Allied Health Sciences building and I slowly was able to eliminate things I didn't want to do. So just like on the previous slide that said, you know, you want to work in healthcare, but not um, clinically, that's me. So nursing was out of the question, physical therapy was out of the question, occupational therapy was out of the question, respiratory therapy was out of the question. So anything dealing with bodily fluids or anybody not related to me, breathing on me on a consistent basis was a no-go for me. And so I landed on health information management. And to be perfectly honest, it's been like the best decision I've ever made. It was a half cock decision when I look back at it, but it was a very good half cock and risk taking um, decision. I always say, you know, you need to be able to bet on yourself because if you won't bet on yourself, then you can't expect anybody else to. So for me, I'm one of those, I'll bet all the money that I have down to the very last penny on myself. And I think everyone should look at themselves the same way. So HIM deals with a lot of current health issues, and one of those health issues is patient identification. So the ECRI Institute defines patient identification as the process of correctly matching a patient to appropriately intended interventions and communicating information about the patient's identity accurately and reliably throughout the continuum of care. So accurate patient identifications offers many benefits, such as improve patient safety and outcomes, improve patient satisfaction, reduction in duplicate testing, um, reduce delays in claims, billing, and denials. So for an example, um, I used to work for Orlando Health and I went to see one of the doctors there, a cardiologist or whatever. So saw them, everything is fine, but I never re received the bill. But then I get a call from the collections agency like, hey, your account is now in collection. And you want to know why I never received the bill? Because my, they had my address wrong. Somehow they transposed the number. So I never received the, ad, the bill to pay my bill. So, you know, that was something that I had to sort out with the facility. And they had to bring the account back from collection so that I could pay it and all that other good stuff. So that's just one, like I said, that's just one instance of um, the patient identification issue. Also, you have things where you have patients with the same name or identity theft. There's a lot of that that happens nowadays. One person may not have medical insurance, so they might steal somebody's medical identity to get procedures done that they need done, and then they don't get the bill. The person's um, that medical identity that they stole actually gets hit with the bill. So here are a couple of real life examples of patient ident identification mix-ups. So patient presents for an emergency appendectomy. The insurance provider denies the claim citing, citing prior removal of appendix. And after further evaluations, the patient brother had used his insurance card years prior when he needed the procedure. So again, medical identity theft. Um, another example is we had a lab test where the patient had a pap smear done, but had a male gender name. So the lab canceled the order thinking it was a mislabeling when in fact, the female patient who had a pap smear did have a typically male gender name. So this could this could have really been bad because let's say that the patient had some abnormal cells and maybe they were cancerous and she doesn't know that she has this going into her body because her pap smear was canceled. So maybe that leads to her getting a late stage diagnosis of cervical cancer. Lastly, we have a patient that was scheduled with the wrong date of birth and address. When the patient registered, the date of birth was not verified. That again, that can you know, lead to implications for billing and, and being able to um, be eligible for certain procedures. And then we have two patients with the same first and last name and the same dates of birth. The records were combined several times over the course of years. Patient safety was jeopardized as the two distinct patients could have been harmed due to the combining of their records. So for example, you have John Smith, born October 20th, 1984. John Smith A has diabetes and, and is insulin dependent. 
um, John Smith B has a do not resuscitate order. Because their records are now mixed up, it's, it's possible for them to receive the incorrect treatments or services. So let's say John Smith B has a heart attack and goes into and flat lines and they're looking at their records and they don't see that there's a DNR order, quote unquote. And so they bring him back and now they're in violation of his DNR order because he didn't wanna be brought back. Or, you know, John, John B, John Smith gets John A's insulin and that sends him into insulin and that causes health issues for him. John A has issues now because he didn't get his insulin. So um, they can do patient identification mix-ups can have some serious consequences behind them. So now that I have hopefully gotten you jazzed up about the profession. Are you excited to learn more? How does one go about getting started in pursuing a career in HIM? There are a couple of different options for those looking to get into the profession. So the first option is the associate degree, which makes you eligible for the registered health information technician exam. So it's a two year degree. Um, programs are on campus, online or hybrid. So Seminole State College, we offer the two-year degree that's online, but you do have a face-to-face -face internship. And we also have a coding certificate program, which is also online. The good thing about our program is that the classes you take to earn a coding certificate also count towards the two-year degree. So the courses that are in the um, two-year certificate are also part of the two-year degree, basically. Um, so our goal, my goal, is to prepare graduates to be productive with minimal additional training following employment and provide a pathway to high to high skill, high wage earning careers that are off, off that offer long term sustainability. So some of the courses you'll take in our two, two year degree program include medical terminology, anatomy and physiology, pharmacology, data analysis, healthcare statistics. Um, quality management, um, coding courses in ICD-10 and CPT coding, um, legal aspects of HIM, human resources management, reimbursement methodologies, and health information systems. So how does someone advance in the HIM profession? So this snapshot is taken from the AHIMA's U.S. Salary Survey Report of HIM professionals in 2019. And so the top three skill set elements that survey participants believe had the greatest influence on promotion was professional experience, education level, and certification level. Now, there are also other skill set and elements that factor in, such as um, success on projects, personal effort to affect change, um, luck, just simply being in the right place at the right time and just knowing the right people. So we're gonna focus on professional experience, education and certification as far as advancing in the HIM profession. So with professional experience, you start at your entry level roles, you know, getting your foot in the door as a patient registrar or as an HIM analyst. And then you stay in those roles for like six years to a month and you move into a mid-level role as a coding professional or as a health information technician, eventually moving into advanced level roles such as a coding trainer, um, management, supervisory roles, or a data analyst. Now, while you're climbing those professional level roles, you also want to take into consideration your education, your coding certificate, your associate degree, and most of all, you want to be a lifelong learner lifelong learn, learner, okay? This is a profession where you're constantly learning, things are constantly changing. So it's important to stay up to date on the latest trends and issues within the HIM industry. And then as far as certifications, you wanna focus on your registered health information technician, which you are eligible for, eligible for upon completion of the associate degree. And then you have several coding certifications, such as the Certified Coding Associate, the Certified Coding Specialist, and then the Certified Coding Specialist Physician. And if you notice, each one is sort of like a, a rung to the next 
credential. So starting with the, C, the certified coding associate, all you need is the completion of a coding certificate program. And guess what? We have that coding certificate program. So our coding certificate program, the education will make you eligible for the pro, will make you eligible to sit for the exam and give you the knowledge and skills needed to be successful on the exam. Next, you have the certified coding, a certified coding specialist. All you need is the uh, experience in education or certification. So having that CCA, as I talked about previously, would make you eligible the certification around. And then having your associate degree or your coding certificate and then some a, a year of experience will help you and make you eligible for sitting for the exam. And then you move up to the certified coding specialist position. Again, for certification wise, that makes you eligible having your CCS. So as you see, each one builds upon the previous cert certification. So here's my contact information. And I also in included the contact information for um, my advisor, Andrea Omer. And this concludes my presentation. So if you have any questions.